Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 386. Uh, each week um, we meet here um, to review the questions and answer, answers asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight we have um, Masataki Wasan. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. David Razam. Uh, David Razam is a leading internet marketer. He lives in West Sussex. Um, he's um, on the sunny side, the, the bottom end of the UK. <laughs> and Tim Kappa, Tim Kappa um, is uh, currently celebrating uh, his uh, award um for online ownership being named as the best local seo consultancy uh, in the uk um, from the midlands enterprise awards 2020 wow yep <clears throat> it's quite shocked myself jim <laughs> <laughs> yeah well here we let, let's do we've got nine questions tonight um Number one uh, is uh, a, uh, a Christmas keyword uh, question. Um, it's from Neil Cheeseman, um, who's, who's a, a strong supporter of uh, our uh, group on Facebook. Um, Neil said uh, a Christmas question. If the homepage is ranking for Christmas XXXXXX, I hope he doesn't mean porn then. Um, <laughs> It got, it got Tim Kappa's attention anyway. Um, <laughs> if, if the home page is ranking for Christmas XXX at position 12 on Google, would you think it's better to make a separate page slash URL um, for Christmas or to add text to the home page with an H2 heading? Hmm. Oh, it's it's a one of those it depends answers, I think. Um, if uh, Christmas, should we say they're Christmas kisses, just in case we uh, we get into uh, into worries about this being about porn? Um, yeah, if Christmas XXXX uh, fits nicely with the, the home page, um, I would I would work on that. I would do some more optimization on the home page. Um, if if it's not a good fit, um, then as a really um, poor second, I would say create that page. Um, you might get into problems with the two um, uh, competing with each other. Although I suspect that's not going to be a, a enormous problem. Um, but it's just the amount of work you need to to do. To get a Christmas um, key phrase to to uh, to rank, uh, they can be pretty difficult. So um, yeah, um, I think if you can um, do some do some optimization on the homepage. So I think no, obviously I don't know which site this is for, but Neil has traditionally come or post questions with uh, around the theater, theater booking kind of stuff. So, so I'm guessing you're ranking position 12 because now your homepage, and I'm only guessing because I'm, I'm just saying from the theater side, like if this was the theater site, is that because now you're starting to have uh, Christmas productions appearing within this, the, the homepage, you know, with like what's going on kind of thing or what's coming up next. And there's a couple of little shows in there, Christmassy. And that's probably why there's not a lot, but you're position 12, you know. So, Uh, 
you could look at this. Well, you see, the thing is, Christmas comes but once a year. <laughs> if you created an actual Christmas page itself, that page itself will essentially build up its own Christmassy kind of links over time and authority. Of course, it's going to be empty for the rest of the year. I guess you could have, um, I guess you guys know quite a way in advance, like what's being uh, produced or coming up, I'm assuming. And I guess you could have a thing like um, when there's no work, well, like end of Christmas, obviously, let's say January, February, March, like maybe through even up to June, you wouldn't have anything that's bookable on there. Um, I guess you could have like um, just some content on there about w w what's coming up. Um, sign up to be notified, like a little like a sign up thing to be notified when our first Christmas productions land. Um, and then that over time would always be there, and that over time. Each year when something's, you know, different, you know, you might you build links to that page, et cetera, et cetera. And then that over time will build and essentially each time it's becoming new, you could, you could essentially be building through to that. But of course, for the, for the first bit, you're not, you, you know, you're not necessarily going to be ranking that page. Um, So it is a depends, like David said. Um, and it also depends if, if it is even a theatre site you're talking about. Um, for in the back of my mind, like, so I'm only going on base, um, uh, like with some of my uh, hotel clients that we deal with similar sort of instance they um christmas comes once a year but your menus and your packages change yearly um so we've got a page permanent page of course at the end of the year it comes out of the navigation it's still live but each year and then obviously there's a sign up if you want to sign up blah blah blah, blah and it comes back sort of mid-year, around about October time with new menus, new packages, stuff available. And now essentially, even when it comes out of the navigation, um, obviously because it's just not needed for half the year, um, it, it essentially ranks now. So we probably started them in ranks, um, it, it pretty much ranks you know, number one Christmas, you know, in X city, X town, blah, 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 for, um, you know, across the chains. Um, so that's why I, from that point of view, I think it would be beneficial for future. Um, and of course it's, it's, it, it, it's, you know, if someone is a bit, you know, too keen on Christmas, like now, it's, in, you know, September and searches for Christmas productions. And of course there isn't anything in, but you might have the reason you rank it, you know, um, then of course they're landing on a permanent page. They can sign up for an alert or they can at least see what you believe is coming out. Obviously there's no booking available for it yet or whatever the case may be. Um, and of course you can start building content around that um, Christmassy kind of stuff anyway uh on the site and at least you've got a page to reference um so for for me i think i would i would really look at it but of course i'm assuming this is the theater site so yeah yeah I, I, it's not i don't think it's the theater, theater site he, he did say yeah uh, it's for an artist and portraits can be given as christmas presents um that's only part of the annual workload uh right well that's my entire five minutes of rambling down the drain 
But right. it's, not, it's not that different, is it? Because it's once yeah. once a year you're 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 getting people who might give portraits. Once a year you might get people who who book for Christmas lunch or something. It, it's it's a sim similar annual expenditure. Um, you know, something that's something you don't do very often. So you know, I think the I think the idea of you know, a Christmas page is perhaps perhaps works as well, but I, I still wonder whether it's a it's a section on the home page. You know, much like you have, um, you know, do you, most m most home pages have sections in them. Well, have a seasonal section about Christmas, about uh, Christmas kissing portraits or whatever they are. Um, so um, and do that um but maybe next year when faced with the certainty of christmas coming again uh you might start earlier on building a christmas seasonal page um but i don't think i'd do it now not with that that's ranking at 12. with your home page ranking at 12 or, or the home page ranking at 12. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you, uh, Tim. Um, we right to move on to the next. Let's do it. Okay. And by the way, is my screen showing our questions? Cool. Yep. Yes. Here's one, Here's one and, from. And, um, and the old sorry. interesting message that pops up in the corner. Um, it, no, your, uh, your social media comings and goings. <laughs> oh, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Well, at least you can see my life's pretty boring. Um, this one is from uh, Angela Schmidt, and um, she's saying or asking how much schema, uh, how, how much will schema boost search visibility um what percentage if any from your experience how to be sure that i'm doing it properly i am between an intermediate and beginner level thank you i have to say that to angela that uh, we are all at the beginner level <laughs> speak for yourself jim <laughs> <laughs> um the it's how it, it's i guess it's not how much it's how schema boosts search visibility um it's it won't help you in the in the main um serps but it will help you rank in some of the SERP features um so if you it, it, it's a it's a good idea to put schema where appropriate on pages um because even if google is not using uh displaying um SERP features for the particular searches you're you're interested in they may do tomorrow um I think it's you know I think it's worth doing, um, and I think it can make a, a lot of difference in the these times when uh, the the the, the search results page are just cluttered with with ads and local SEO and maps and whatever else Google <coughs> tends to tends to use to push the the normal organic results down below the fold. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's a it's a damn good idea to use them where you can. There are some uh, instances where you you struggle to find some some schema to put on a page, um, but um, and it, it's it's pretty easy to do it once you know how. Um, and I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to give you some links uh, now to to tools to do it but there are plenty of tools 
out there will, that will help you set up schema. Um, and um, the best way of setting up schema is, is JSON, J-S-O-N. Um, so you, you need to look, some, look, look for a tool that allow you to do that. And then Google has a, um, a schema um, testing tool uh, that will make sure that what you've added to your page um, is is sensible and set up correctly. Um, so um, that's that's a brief thought and pointer to how to go about it. Um, don't know what the other thing. Thank you, David. Yeah, totally. I mean. <clears throat> um, not necessarily a ranking factor, but schema is there. You know, um, it helps Google understand what 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 the page is about. Uh, if you're if it's for a local business, um, and depending on what kind of local business it is, it is, you know, that can really work uh, well um, uh, to help Google give uh, have a better understanding of it. Um, and there's different applications, you know, within a uh, local business that you can use. If it's a service area business and it has a radius, if it's specifically serving um, set areas, you know, there's a there's, there's, there's whole, whole load of applications with it. Um, you just need to, you know, de define what you are actually are. Uh, if you're e-com, of course, all your products. Um, if you've got FAQ pages, you know, it, 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 it all provides um, sort of obviously richer, richer snippets where applicable um, and, 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 and makes, you know, makes service more interesting. Um, yeah, you know, there, there's a whole, whole variety of different things. Um, uh, if you're a local business, events are pretty cool to play around with. You know, it doesn't actually have to be an event. Even a sale can be uh, marked up as an event, which can also be displayed in your knowledge panel. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, you don't have to be like a major expert in this. You just, you know, um, find find a find a nice little generator you like working with, test it in the um, Google's, you know, in the in in, in the in the markup tool um which is actually changing um but it, it's still essentially there um and yeah test it, it fine tune it refine it it will take a little bit of getting used to um you know um, i even now you know i think i've got it right i pop it in the tester and i've freaking left out a semicolon or something and so it is quite finicky you need to actually get it precise to validate um and then but you know once once you get the hang of it you can you can actually you can actually have a lot of fun with it in in what you're trying to achieve and and test and play around with it you know excellent thank you tim <clears throat> thank you david <clears throat> mr taki will we move on yep i think david and tim covered everything thank you mate all right, number three on our run list is from Nathan Nikolai Guidi. Um, it's titled, Is a Non-Related Link in the Footer Problematic? Um, for example, uh, we support this hospital on a, a sticker store website. Um, no, it's not an issue. Um... Definitely not an issue. Um, but what are the bloody three new things that ah, the three new things for links now uh, from Google? It's rel UGC, rel sponsored. And um, yeah, <laughs> just mark it and follow. <laughs> um, but if it's your client also, 
uh, like you said, it's your client also. So I wouldn't, in, if that instance, right, so you, you, you're playing into a little bit of thing here. Um, I probably wouldn't put it in a footer. Uh, yeah, it's your client, but what happens one day when one is not your client and another is your client and another one's there, and I think you're, you're probably being a little bit disingenuous to the two clients. So even if they have both agreed that they want to do some kind of reciprocal marketing, I still don't, uh, I don't think the footer is your best place. I think you should create um, a page that who we support, who we work with. Uh, it could be your, in your, um, your, your, in any one of the, the the pages on site you know um our brand uh, you know it could be on our brand page it could be on our um about us our history page whatever whatever you've got there i think a singular link of a singular page will be far better um we support these guys you know this is our commitment this is what we're doing charity wise mm -hmm. with the local community and it's on a single page in there. And I, I, I don't think you should be doing it on a footer, um, and especially when I see you say it's, what if it's another client? I think that's just being disingenuous for both clients. Um, yeah. I think keep it to a singular page about our brand or whatever, you know, whatever you've got on site. Um, our work with the community or whatever the page it is, yeah? But I think a singular page on site, one link going to uh, that site. Thank you, Tim. Anybody else? Yeah, I think um, that that the hospital is the is his client as well. That sort of muddies the water, doesn't it? Um, if it isn't, then if that is not the case, it's purely about supporting a local hospital, for example, then, you know, wherever you place a link, I prefer Tim's method. Um, you know, that should be an ordinary link because it's an editorial link that you decide to support this hospital. Now, if you, if the hospital is a client and you're placing the link because of that relationship, then it's a sponsored link because it's an advertisement, right? Because you're receiving money for your work. And if it is the case that part of that work is to place a link on your site to that hospital, that is a sponsored link. Um, I don't see no follow, I don't see how no follow would apply in this instance. It's either editorial link, so just an ordinary link, or it's a sponsored link. Thank you, Mr. Tagge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's um, have a look at number uh, number four on our own list. Um, this one, another one from Nathan Nikolai Gardi. It's titled uh, "Removing Some Keywords Off My Mobile Version." Um, Nathan said, "Hi. One, if due to space limitations, I." Re remove some keywords off my mob mobile version, will I lose them? Uh, and two, if crawled by the desktop, but will I need to worry about number one? I think most sites now have moved to mobile first. So I don't think you, can, you can't specify like desktop or that. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remove. <laughs> like, where? What do you mean? Like, I don't understand. Like, is your is this site not responsive, or have you got such a mega long freaking title tag in there that it's literally wrapping around the <laughs> wrapping around? Um, it's like wrapping around the screen when it, when when you view in mobile. Um, but essentially, if you believe that, or, you know, if you feel that because it's, you know, obviously, um, 
you know, if you're worried about removing a particular keyword in such a mega long thing that's wrapping around, um, I think you should probably, you should probably look at props, like providing something a bit better to the user. Um, everything's going to be mobile. If yours isn't mobile first indexed at the minute, it will be at some point. Um, and then if you think that that keyword is like the be all and end all, I, I just, I, you know, cause now you, now you're looking at, you're at a point now where shoving in so many keywords into a freaking title or something. Um, and, and then the actual user landing on it, uh, is, is, you know, I would say if you actually get someone to you, a user onto there, and then they're just going to be put off by all this like crap you got on the site, you know, all these keywords shoved in, um, then I think you, you, you need to start forgetting about shoving in the keyword because, you know, they are either going to read it or they're not. And you need to probably work on the sites in a different way than chucking in keywords. Like, by the way, I don't think shoving in keywords is going to help anything. Um, you know, Google's a lot more nuanced than that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with what Tim says. Um, also, a slightly different view on it is that I... I don't like having separate mobile and um, and desktop versions. Um, you, it's so easy to get caught up in this sort of thinking. Um, you know, trying to tweak one version because you think it's going to work in some way, but the other version doesn't have to. And you've got you maybe you're thinking the desktop version. Well, Google's not looking at that, so I can do. X, Y, Z with it because Google won't penalize me. And why, why would you do that in the first place? You know, you're, you're producing one set of good content. Um, you know, you've got all sorts of messing about and, and management problems with having two sets of content. Just produce one set of good content for the for the users, for Google, for, you know, whoever. But going along tweaking um, key phrases here and there, particularly in one set, is is bonkers. You're, you're just, you're getting sucked down a rabbit hole that just won't give you, well, it's, you're just being sucked down a, a rabbit hole. You know, just just produce good content that works for users and Google, um, and make sure that it works on mobile. Because if it works on mobile, it will almost certainly work on desktop. You know, which is one of the reasons why Google brought in um, mobile first indexation. Um, but I, I, th I think you're just you're losing track of what you should be doing. Yep, thank thank you, David. Uh, I, I see too. Michael Martin has uh, said in the comments. Um, he said that Google wants everyone to create mobile-friendly content for its index. That's the world we live in now. Okay, let's um, go to the next one. Almost halfway through. Um, this one is from Sam Ford. Which comes first, build the website or learn SEO? Sam said, I'm going to make a website with science fiction stories. Um, should I uh, make the site first or is it recommended that I learn the basics of SEO? Um, this is an interesting one. Um, what I would normally say to... Uh, to anyone is is just learn the basics of SEO and then get get into producing your content. Don't spend years learning the uh, the in the the minutiae of, of, of SEO, you know, because otherwise you, you're just going to stall. 
you know, get some content up. Content is good and get it up, but do it with a, a, a view to, to understanding SEO. However, what have you got here? You've got science fiction stories. Are you going to let key phrases and key phrase research um, bias the way that you're you're writing your science fiction stories? Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, are you writing the the science fiction stories? Have you got uh, um, you have you got um, writers who are going to contribute to this site? And if so, will they um, will they uh, like you editing your e editing their content with SEO in mind? Um, so I, 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 you may you may need to think about whether you're whether you can um, do anything with your science fiction stories um, with SEO in mind. Let's not say you can't you can't create some other content that talks about science fiction um, and tries to rank for the right kind of searches. Um, but I, I, I do wonder whether you can do much with, with, the, with the stories themselves. Yeah, I think, you know, if, <laughs> I think if you, you know, never really, <sighs> I mean, the way people learn about SEO is literally by doing it. I think it's probably a bit weird to be learning about it to create a website. I think you need to, yes, it helps to have the basic principles in mind in the initial design, um, but you know, your homepage, your what kind of, how you're going to categorize it, how you're going to structure the site, depending, you know, I mean, I don't know what, you, what you've got in mind, <clears throat> but if it's just a site with some stories like literally a home page and then like essentially a blog where people can sift or navigate through different stories and blah 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 then just go for it you know like in that sense um uh, it, google has their own basic like thing on seo which i think you know probably be good enough to get, you know, sink your teeth just to understand the basics. Uh, probably also just look at um, a good thing for site design. Yeah. Uh, you know, basic, basic um, structure of it, um, which will then give you the two kind of things. So what basically Google is saying in terms of, you know, things like this, and then, and then, you know, depending on this, um, and then go for it because then you can start refining things as you go along, you know, um, because you can't learn SEO without having something to tinker with and experiment with and play with. You, 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 it's going to be very difficult to learn something without actually doing something. Yeah. So um, I would just say check out the Google or even maybe Moz, Moz, you know, SEO, basic SEO guide, um, you know, just get the basics in your head. Another thing, just, just off the top of my head, you're publishing science fiction stories. I don't know like how, what, anything it's, you, you know, but there's um, a good thing for you to check out, depending on how you're doing this, is these new, shit, what are they called? It's called web stories. So um, that could be pretty cool, depending on how these, uh, depending on how you're going to be laying out these science fiction stories. You know, um, that could be pretty cool if you built, if you obviously had your homepage and then your actual stories were in web stories. You know, they're indexed, they're read, they're exactly the same as. Uh, you know, if it was on a single page or two pages or three pages. And that's another thing, depending on how big these stories are. Um, pagination, that might be something that you, you want to just double check out. But, you know, any CMS nowadays should uh, deal with that if you're using a, like a, a proper, you know, plugin. Um, but web stories, yeah. do yourself a favor, check Great. that out. Yeah. That could be pretty cool. There's Google's new uh, WordPress plugin. Yeah. Them so they're not 
they're not a big undertaking anymore. Yeah, it's literally, it's on WordPress. You literally got to just do it into the same format of the plugin. And then it, it and it's quite a very cool interactive experience for the, for the user, you know, which could make your sign, your stories actually pop a bit more. Um, so have a look at those. And they're essentially it's WordPress. They'll be optimized exactly the same way as you would a normal article. So there's you like, don't, don't overthink it. You know, it's literally, it's just a different format of putting, you know, the user can use. So, yeah. Excellent. Any more? Right. Um, number six on our run list uh, is from uh, Funny Tie Dyes. Um, he said, he asked the question, it's titled, uh, which domain would you go with and why? Um, he, he went on to say, hey, y'all, a quick question. Which domain would you go with and why? He said, it's for a client's drop shipping site dedicated to classic hip hop music and merchandise. Um, a O G R. APmusic.com, OG Rap Music title of the site, um, rapogs.com, um, uh, dash rap OGS. Uh, A has better keywords, uh, B is only six characters. These days, uh, keywords um, aren't a big thing, so don't use it for that. I think. I think really you've got to see which one makes sense, which one clicks with your uh, with your your customers, your your classic hip hop audience. Um, so I I would um, I would find some uh, classic hip hop um, collectors and uh, and try it out. Uh, see which uh, see which one they like. Um, but uh, yeah, that that that's I think that's really the the way to go about it. Um, if if they both make sense, I think I'll probably go for the shorter one. Um, but I suspect one of them will will uh, will appeal more than the other. Thank you, David. Okay, that, I think we. We can call it a wrap and uh, what was that first domain uh, don't, don't worry about it you don't have to you, no you don't have to go back to him i can go um, no no you don't have to because you, you can still listen to this but the, the, the one was og rap or rap ogs was it ogs rap and one was ogs rap music wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, ograpmusic.com and rapogs.com yeah T to be fair like like david said keywords don't really matter however having said that i think you will get better traction faster No, 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 no. Um, yeah, actually, you, with, with music in it, you're actually getting to music. Whereas with just OG's rap, it, there is a whole lot of incidental shit there because Google doesn't quite understand at the minute what the user actually wants. So there's the music. Then there's articles. Um, then there's Pinterest, like Wikipedia. Because mm. too short, and um, for uh, I'm saying for the original, because that's obviously going to be your title, and you are going to. Oh fuck! You know, you know what? Ignore me. I would say go with the shorter. It's easier. It's brandable, etc. But obviously, make sure you optimize for music. Don't just like optimize like OG's rap. 
because the query and it's going to take time for Google to understand who you are. And in that time that you're building up the brand, etc., you're really going to, um, you know, have a little bit more time. You, you're going to have a lot of other things in the search results that isn't actually music. It's more about Google trying to understand, you know, like explain what OG is and this and then, you know, so yeah. Just ignore me. I'm rambling. Sorry. I'm overthinking this. It's okay, Tim. <laughs> I, uh, it must be the only the excitement of winning. Thanks, thanks Jim. I, for the UK. I'm, I'm practicing. I'm practicing for my senior moments like you, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be as good as you, Jim. <laughs> Well, look, keep trying, and um, maybe you will. <laughs> um, tell me something. The, the um, award, did, did they call you up? Did you get the um, uh, awards night? No, 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 because COVID, man. Oh, right. Yeah. So, so this year it's all just, hey, congratulations, and then we'll ship the stuff to you. And obviously, they're going to do an interview and all that and stuff, but no, no. They're not going to shift a, a dinner and a, a bottle of champagne to you so you can uh, so you can celebrate at home on your own. <laughs> <laughs> home alone. <laughs> I'm going to go take myself to Nando's. <laughs> All right, so, uh, let's have a look at number seven on our run list. Uh, it's titled, it had a few pages that were problematic. Uh, it's from Nick Dawes, who said, uh, hi, guys. Uh, I'm wondering if there's anything I should be doing proactively, act proactively regarding this issue. I had a few pages that were problematic, which Google picked up and I have since fixed. However, Google is taking its sweet time deciding if it wants to index them or not. To the point, uh, I'm wondering if something is up. Um, it was crawled initially on the 13th of August, fixed a few days later. Uh, resubmitted the sitemap, which has been successfully discovered, etc. It's now the 6th of September. If the answer is more patience, that's absolutely fine. I just wanted to check. Thanks in advance, guys. I've felt this. I've found this group very helpful so far on my SEO journey. I must point out Michael Martinez. Uh, um, oh, Richard Hearn. I see his face there too. Um, um, but um, yes. Uh, we, Michael uh, gives so many answers. Richard Hearn too, and I see some more new people uh, um, appearing this week. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think what Michael and what Richard says are absolutely spot on. Um, normally, the the answer is to wait for Google to do its sweet thing. Um, which takes as long as Google wants it to. But given what what Richard has discovered, that it was 500 errors on the server, it's probably a good idea to, to give each of the pages a prod. Um, test now, as, as Richard says. So, yeah, um, I think all I did there was to to read what Michael and Richard said. I don't know why I I bothered to do it really, but because uh, <laughs> I I realised whilst reading what they said that there wasn't actually very much I could add to it. <laughs> okay, any more? All right, let's go to number eight on our run list. This one from Benny. UBS RGR. I don't know how I would pronounce that. Um, it's titled, Should I Buy This Expired Domain? Um, it starts off a 301 redirect question. Um, 
And Benny goes on to say, hi, guys. So I found an expired domain in the same niche, uh, just like my money site. Um, yeah, um, this really should, I should explain those terms, and if I knew what they actually meant, I would. Um, I hope you guys will do it. The expired domain has great contextual links from um, a, a, a big news site in my country um, and a uh, clean history. The domain is going to cost around 1,000 euros. Um, I, um, I never bought a domain that expensive before, but, but I know that an expired domain uh, in the same niche with great links is worth every penny. My question is, uh, the domain is not indexed right now. Should I start a private blog network with the domain or should I 301 redirect the domain to my homepage money site? <laughs> and before I do the 301 redirect, should I first post some content on the domain and let it index and then redirect it or should I redirect it straight? What is the best way to go with a highly relevant and expensive domain like this? Uh, looking forward to your answers. Ooh, this this sounds this sounds ever so such a little bit black hatty going on here. Um, I uh, this 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 is. This is one of those things that I think could uh, could backfire quite badly um, if you're um, if you're taking this domain. Um, I think you know if you're going to buy it, I think you should put some unique and quality content on it. Um, I don't think I would recommend you to three hundred one redirect it to a site that is already making money i presume a money site is one that is making money um so i would yeah i i, I don't think i would uh i would 301 redirect it to a site that's already making making you some money so you then got to think how much i don't know what it's what it's about i don't know what what uh what niche this is about and i i don't know if you can um if you can um make a thousand euros quickly um to make up the site of the domain and if it's a similar domain from it's, it's going to be a similar site to your money site why not just put all that that uh, uh all that that um time and money into making your original site better because you know the the thing is, the we've touched on this in one of the earlier questions. The having keywords in your domain is not really going to help you anymore. So you know, I I think this is likely to cause all sorts of problems for you. And I would say, save your money, put your time and money into your money site. Yeah, you know. <clears throat> Links on an expired domain, um, you're gonna have to be like, I know you, I know you say they're clean, but it's, you know, yeah, it's like, you know, you really need to be, so one, like if I was, if I was essentially, yeah, have you, have you looked at this in Wayback Machine? Like what was the content like? That's what I want to know. And also, did you know that you can literally, you know, if you go and buy it, um, and if 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 it's in way back, you just re basically recreate the entire site from way back and just you know re just republish the entire site. Um, but you know, I would just having a link coming from like a news site is, yeah, you know, it depends what kind. I mean, some of them are they're just not essentially worth it um um tsh, 
I, w- I would want to see what the site is, man. Just because it's a domain, I, I'm like, I, I, honestly, I wouldn't be looking at p- paying a thousand for an just for an expired domain. Um, if I was going to be paying a thousand, I would probably look at recreating the site or at least see what the site was first. Um, because if it's attracting links, you know, if you if it's as good as this and it was attracting these kind of links. I'd probably just recreate the entire site um, as it was, and then have that up and running. But then use that as affiliate into your into your other money site if it was as good as you think it was, um, which you can do from way back. Just scrape the fuck out of that and then just recreate it, um, or refine it and fine tune it from what it was already it's it's piss easy to do it's not going to take you you know what i mean and and it's been expired um but i would you know it's it's, this is the where it depends you know tools say to us okay there's this link there's that link there's this link but you still don't know what what that site was so if i was going to as david said i wouldn't ever 301 redirect it without knowing what the hell was going on so I would, I would resurrect the site. That would then go into Webmaster Tools, and that would then be around for at least a year before you could see any form of whatever coming from Google before you could make any kind of decision on what you were going to be doing with it. I would resurrect it. And you know what? If it was as good as it was, maybe you hit the jackpot. You, you, you resurrect the entire site as it was, Yes, you may need to re fine tune it, get some you know writers to go through and update some of the content on it and whatever. Um, but if it was as good as what this could be your new money site as opposed to your other money site. So yeah, but I would definitely not three hundred one redirect until you exactly know what you're dealing with. Cool. All right. Uh, any more? All right, let's um, go to number nine on our run list. This one from Arson Sir Hale. How do I identify bad backlinks that kill your rankings? Is there any tool available? I have a website with 4.4 thousand plus backlinks. The backlinks um, were first made by a data entry operator and then by some search engine optimization guy two years back. And please guide me. What should I do? It's my first project as an SEO. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> look, there are some there are different tools out there um, which will give you an idea if they are if they are like, if they perceive to be spammy and that not, you know, there's all the, all, all, all some of the big tools do it, you know, SEMrush, Moz, Ahrefs, things like that will give you an idea um, quickly. But at the end of the day, um, you, you nine times out of 10, just by looking at the domain name of these, you'll be able to identify. And by the way, 4.4, you know, backlinks may actually only be 1,500 domains, if that, maybe even less. So it's the domain I would really quickly just have a quick scan at. Um, and also, I'm assuming you found these via, um, you know, your search console. So what I would just quickly do, if you want to just get a quick idea of these things, is literally just break them down into the domain and have a look at the actual domain. And you can literally spot a shit site that you don't want anything to do with right off the bat, right? And just just disavow the entire domain. Don't disavow and go through each individual little, you know, like URL. No, just boom, domain, site wide, gone, ciao, bye-bye. Yeah, and you can quickly see it. I mean, half the time you can see it off the actual domain itself, like dub 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 for you know, like best seo links.com. Like, 
that you know what I mean like come on man you can see these things so yeah there are tools out there which and look they are definitely even with tools you need to still double check every single one I mean I I I just looked at like for example this week on mine with um uh, I use uh, I've used Semrush and Semrush sent me an alert saying to my own site I had like a high percentage of like toxic links and there were some they were basically all feed links because from from articles where people republish my stuff. Um, so I, I I don't mess about just for that I just disavow the entire domain. But of course now here's the interesting one Semrush had also flagged white spark mars uh, um uh google like they had flagged uh google support um help articles things like this so you know do you remember just remember tools are human programmed to certain variables and they are not always accurate you need to you know actually click into it and have a look at the site and once you see that page you will like it, it all will be revealed whether this is crap or not and don't bother just you know um disavowing a single url just do the domain and move on with it thank you Tim. yeah that's all good stuff i agree with all of that um the 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 thing I would add, perhaps, is if you really think there's a lot of problems here, uh, you might not be you might not be finding all of these links if you just go to one source of links. Um, you know, if you if you do um, if you do Google Search, Search Console, Search Console, <laughs> whatever it is, that, that Google thing. Um, uh, and if you go to SEMrush and if you go to Ahrefs and to Majestic, you will get some overlap, but you'll also get others. They won't have found all of them. Um, so you, if you're being really um, thorough about this because you feel that you have to be, then you should get a list of uh, of incoming links from say three or four um three or four um sources and stick them together in a uh, a spreadsheet and find the unique ones um if it's you know if it's if you're just being a bit worried about it um or you actually know what they are anyway because you've got the the, the list of links that the uh, uh that, that, that were put in then you don't need to worry about that. But if you don't know what they are and you're seriously concerned about this, then you might have to spring the money for um, several of these tools and uh, and bring all of the lists together to get a, a comprehensive one. Thank you, David. All right, I think it's uh, that time uh, of um, the recording yes it's thank you for watching time we'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this all again we'll answer all of the questions asked and answered on the dumb seo questions uh, facebook group hopefully uh, david will be there tim will be there of course tim now that uh, he um, is the best local SEO <laughs> in the UK, may find himself, he might be too proud to come on board with us, David, do you think? Yeah, we're, we're, we're not good enough for him now, are we? Oh, come on, mate, 10 years, 10 years, <laughs> Jim. I wouldn't just ditch you after 10 years, Jim. Yeah. Ten and yeah. a half years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, if it was five, yeah, you'd be gone, mate. But, you know, 10 years, we've... We've built a bond. I mean, who else could I slag off like this? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's um, 
um, we'll uh, stop this recording and uh, we'll be back uh, next week. Um, we, oh, I can't go without thanking people like Michael Martin as uh, Brenda uh, Michelin and uh, so on. Um, so many others. I saw some new names tonight. I should um, be jotting these down and making notes as we go, shouldn't I, Tim? Anyway, Masataki, thank you very much for your contributions too. Um, yep, we'll be gone and we'll be back next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.